Hello and welcome to an introduction to the Mercator chart. So this is going to be a relatively brief introduction of the Mercator Admiralty small boat chart, uh, which is the chart that most small yachtsmen would use. Um, this chart was published in 2003 and comes out of the folio 5600, which is the Solent and Approaches. So um, you can look on a chart, you can see the 5600 dot six means it's chart six in the folio 5600. Um, so a few things to first of all go through. First of all as you can see at the top of the chart we have WGS 84. Now this relates to the chart datum uh, so you must make sure that your GPS that you're using has the same chart datum as this chart. If it doesn't then you'll have information which does not uh, work with information shown on the chart and you could get yourself into trouble. So WGS84 which is the standard pretty much nowadays for chart datums but just make sure that your GPS is set to the same chart datum when you're using a chart with WGS84 as the chart datum shown. What else have we got? Well we have our longitude scale across the top and the bottom and as you can see it says here longitude one degree 15 minutes west from Greenwich so that we know that we are west of Greenwich which means that longitude must be numbering that way as we go from zero at Greenwich and we go west and if we look at the scale you can see that's happening one degree 15 16 17 18 okay what else is on the chart that's of use um, we can see that here adjoining chart 5600.11 so that means that the chart to the north here, if we needed to run up here, we needed the next chart, is chart 11 in folio 5600. So if we were doing a passage plan, we would have made sure that we had chart number 11 ready so that we can peel from this chart to the next chart when we want to go there. Um, and the same on the sides. We can see here on the western side, adjoining chart 5600.5. So we would know that Chart number five in folio 5600 is to the west. Other information. Um, we've got tidal information. Now these tidal diamonds, as they're called, have a position next to them. And those positions, 50 degrees, 46 decimal nine north, one degree, 19 decimal three west, is the position for tidal diamond A. Okay, so tidal diamond A is here and our position would have been shown on the longitude and the latitude scales and we can see there that's tidal diamond A. Tidal diamond A and all the other tidal diamonds on the chart show for each hour before and after high water on a specific day the um, direction and rate of tide dependent on whether it springs or leaps and it's re relative to high water on that day. High water where? Well, we can see it says tidal streams refer to high water at Portsmouth. So as long as we have an almanac with the tidal times for the year for Portsmouth, we can work out what direction and rate of tidal flow will be at specific points on the chart. So that is where we have our tidal flow information kept. There is also other information on the chart. For instance, you can see here firing practice area, brown down firing range. It gives a position. And it talks about restrictions relating to firing areas and also how to listen in and work out when the range is active. So you can see here brown down firing range, C note. And firing practice area, C note. And this is the note. Okay. What else have we got on the chart? We've got um, voyage. So um, let's just zoom in a little bit so we can see. what we're actually talking about. Uh, so first of all, uh, as you can see here, we've got um, an arrow with two circles and that is showing us direction of voyage. That means as, as we're entering here, we should expect on this chart, which is an ILRA chart, we should expect that the red cans will be on our port side and green cones will be on our starboard side. So if that's happening, we know that we must be in the channel. 
But when we get further west, if we were to carry on down here, we could get into a bit of a problem. Why? Well, because the voyage direction has changed. The direction of voyage here, going to Southampton, is going that way, and we have approached it from this way. So if we're not careful, we are going to get ourselves confused. Um, okay, so always check the direction of voyage. So direction of voyage here, direction of voyage there, and make sure, and that, that will allow you not to get confused when you're looking at marks and, and you end up going the wrong side of a lateral mark. Okay, so what else have we got? There are various notes all around here, and these notes, which are uh, in magenta, uh, are either on the chart or in the almanac. Here we can see entry restricted, C note. Okay, so why is this entry area restricted? Well, it's restricted because, um, as you can see, there is a tight channel here, the Western Approach Channel, with a maintained depth, and that channel gets quite narrow. So for large shipping, it's a busy port, Southampton, and for large shipping, there is a difficult turn to be made here. One of the tightest turns in the world, as I understand it, and especially with tide flowing through, it can be quite challenging for large ships. Therefore, smaller vessels are required to stay clear of large ships in this area, uh, most of the ships being restricted in their ability to manoeuvre or restricted by draft. Um, it's um, important that you know this local information, so it's important that you check your chart and also check the local almanac, which will have a lot of information relating to how far away from ships you must stay uh, and um, other information related to entering port. Okay, so what other information is shown on the chart? Well, the entry into the port of Southampton is here. So as soon as you cross this line, you are into the port of Southampton. Um, on the eastern side, there is another line which shows you the entry into Southampton, port of Southampton, which I think must be just off this chart, so we can't quite see it. But um, Portsmouth would be the next one over, and then you get into Southampton. Um, what other information is on this chart? Well, we have some, some chartlets within the chart, which this shows further up this river, and it's just to give you an indication of what lies further up the river. Obviously, there would be other charts, which would also show you um, uh, what else is to the south, but this is just to give you an indication of what lies further up. And as you can see from this, in the river Medina, um, it does actually dry as you go further south towards Newport. So it's important to know that, otherwise you are going to get left quite literally high and dry, uh, which would not be great. Um, right, so it's colour-coded, the chart. So as you can see, we've got white areas, which are generally the deeper areas. And then we have light blue areas, which are slightly more shallow. And then we have dark blue areas, which are shallower still. And then we have green areas, and green areas dry. So at the very lowest tides of the year, the areas marked in green will dry, and they will dry above chart datum, so above sea level actually, um, by this amount. So if it has a line under it, if, if one of these um, soundings, let's just let me get in a little bit closer so I can show you what I mean. So, um, right, so here we can see uh, Bramble Bank. So it's green, so we know that it dries. And we can see here 0, 3, so large 0, small 3, with a line under them. So that is um, that means that it will dry. It's a drying height, and it will dry to 0 0.3 metres above water level at the lowest water of the year. So if you know that, and you know how much tide you've got, you can work out how much depth of water you will have at a specific position on the chart. So you can see lots of soundings. Um, so here we've got 7.8, that is 7.8 metres. So that is a chart datum of 7.8 metres of water. And to that we add any additional water provided by tide. So at low water we might have another metre of water, so that would mean we have 8.8 .8 metres of water there. At high water we might have 4 metres of water. 
So, you know, that's going to get to 11.8 meters. Right, okay, what else is on the chart that's um, useful to us? Well, we've got lots of information relating to, um, uh, obviously not in great scale, but you can get other scales, showing us things like marinas. We've also got here two chimneys, which are showing two tall chimneys. So those chimneys, why are they shown on a chart like this? Well, when you're trying to pilot a vessel, it's useful to see physical uh, <clears throat> excuse me, physical um, characteristics on the land. Um, and as you can see from this, and this is something we'll go into again later, we have two chimneys there. And if we were to line those two chimneys up from a distance, they're very high so you can see them, you can see that if they're lined up, we are going to go from here with these two chimneys lined up, right over Bramble Bank. So we would be thinking, right, okay, well, I, if I have those two chimneys lined up, I am no one going over Bramble Bank, which is not a great thing to do. So um, if you don't have them lined up, you know that you're likely to be going either side of Bramble Bank. That may <clears throat> still be a problem, depending on how much tide you have. But little things like that enable you to use transits and bearings to best effect. And that's why things like that are shown on the chart. You can also see um, uh, other things. There are other towers and what have you shown around uh, Calshot, um, which uh, have the same value. Okay, um, other information on the chart. Well, we have our lines of longitude and our lines of latitude. And we have scale down the side. And we also have another scale repeated along the meridians on the chart. We also have um, voyage. Now the voyage is shown in detail. Um, here for instance we have a red can and that red can shows us that um, the edge of the channel here on the port side, the red can, means that we need to leave that to our port side and you can see that that is basically keeping shipping to this side of Ride Middle. Now uh, there is another green can here and another red can here. So that means there are two channels effectively here. So there is this channel which brings shipping in, there is another channel here allowing for shipping, and then you can see there's the north channel here which also allows for shipping. And the start of the north channel is marked by East Bramble which is a cardinal mark, and then it has a red can halfway up at Hill Head, and then a north cardinal mark at the top end of North Channel. So as you came in you'd know that you have to stay east of this on this side. You would approach and then you would head to go north of the North Cardinal Mark and keeping the red mark, the red lateral mark on your port side and that would mean that you're staying in the channel. And as you can see there are shallows to the port and starboard of the channel. So larger shipping would stay in the deeper water and a smaller shipping might decide to use the North Channel. Um, okay, other information on the chart. It shows maintained depths. So there's a three meter maintained depth on the way into Wooden Creek. And it also shows that there is a leading light on the way into Wooden Creek, which is uh, a sector light, which means it's white, red and green, shows white, red and green which is white in the center. If you're in the center going down the channel, it shows red on the port side if you're going out to the port side and green if you're going out to the starboard side. So you need to keep that light white all the way in and that means that you're in the deepest part of the channel. Um, what else do we have? Well, um, information relating to um, voyage, as I mentioned and also lights on voyage. So um, we know, for example, that uh, here, South Ride Middle, um, it's got a G under it and it's cone-shaped. So we know it's a green lateral mark. And here it says fl.g.5s, which means flashing green every five seconds. So it's one flash of green every five seconds. So at night, we would be looking for that and we would know then from the chart and we could see it we would say, right, okay, great, that's the mark that we're looking for. Right, so that gives us some basic information on the Mercator Admiralty chart. 
it shows us the information we've got. Uh, one thing I hadn't mentioned, which is important, is that um, here you can see we have a compass rose. So the compass rose here is on the chart. It shows a north, which as you can see varies slightly from the north-south run of longitude. So bear in mind that that is the true north. That is going to the true north position of the North Pole. This is going to the magnetic north, which varies over time. And as you can see, when this chart was published, which was in 2003, there was a three degree, five minute west variation from true north for magnetic north. So magnetic north was three degrees, five minutes west of true north at this location on the planet. Now, Magnetic north varies depending on where you are on the planet, and there are local anomalies dependent on things like the uh, location of granite and um, metals and ground. So, if we know that in 2003 the variation between magnetic and true north was 3 degrees 5 minutes west, and it changes, how do we know how much to change by? Well, on the chart it says brackets 9 minutes east, close brackets. So that means that every year the variation is changing by nine minutes east and it's a westerly variation so it means that the variation between magnetic and true north is reducing by nine minutes east every year and we had 17 years since 2003 as i record this video in 2020 so in 17 years we've gone nine minutes east times 17. so you can imagine we are very nearly, we've very nearly eroded entirely that three degrees five minutes west and variation, which means that at the moment, compass, sorry, uh, magnetic north and true north are almost the same in the Solent in 2020. So um, in other parts of the world, you might find there's a 20 or 30 degree variation. So it's very important that you allow for this, and we'll talk about this in another video. Okay. So I'm going to talk about voyage and also about fixing positions and dead reckoning and estimated positions and calculating courses to steer in other videos. But that was a, uh, an initial video looking at the Mercator chart and uh, how you use it in simple terms. I hope uh, that it was of use to you.